Prime Minister Narendra Modi who is attending the funeral, uh, you have Rahul Gandhi attending the funeral and they are the ones who will have to answer the question about at the end of the day about why is it that politicians have not been able to imbibe the, uh, the simplicity that APJ Abdul Kalam embodied. I think uh, uh, politicians perhaps uh, in, in this country have, have lost touch sometimes with the masses. APJ Abdul Kalam never lost touch with his roots. Uh, and I, you know, it's good that the Prime Minister and uh, Rahul Gandhi and every leader have come together because APJ Abdul Kalam was above political affiliation. He was neither BJP nor Congress. Yes, he committed this one Bihar blunder, yeah. which he will have to, which he will have to live, uh, which was the one dark spot yeah. on his presidential legacy. Yes, he was appointed by an NDA government. Yes, there was a feeling at a time that he was very close to the NDA establishment. But I think if you look at his track record over the five years that he was president, barring the Bihar example, I don't think one can give a single example where he played a partisan role. He took on Sonia Gandhi over the office of profit issue yes. and did not back down. And again, when it came to uh, the Vajpayee government, he did not go out of his way in any way to promote them or favor them. Absolutely. Rajdeep, in fact, you know, it is actually overwhelming to see the number of people and the general public turning up to pay their last respects. In Delhi itself, we were witness to people standing by at the roundabouts for hours before the gates were thrown open to the general public to come and pay their last respects. Uh, apart from his simplicity, his humility, what else do you think struck a chord with the people? Why, why did they want to have that last glimpse? of APJ Abdul Kalam? I think because he is the classic Indian story. He is the story that all of us want to be part of. All of us want to, you know, this is a country of 1.2 billion people. People who have come, who live in far-flung areas like the village in, 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 in Tamil Nadu where uh, APJ Abdul Kalam comes. And as we hear the, we'll just pause yeah. for a moment. I think, uh, uh, well, as I said, you know, I, uh, as those pictures play out, I think somewhere he represents the classic Indian story, uh, Maha. You know, how many Indians from that, coming from such humble backgrounds, could dream of being the president of India? Mm. APJ Abdul Kalam not only dreamt of it, he lived the dream. Mm. And, I, and you see it in the way in which students responded to him, because I think the young saw in him someone they wanted to be. Mm. We are a generation that looks for heroes. Uh, the previous generations had their heroes. The pre-independence generation had a number of heroes. The Gandhis, the Nehru's, the Ambedkar's. Post-independence India, heroes have been few and far between. Yes. Which is why I think APJ Abdul Kalam in that sense was embraced mm. by this new India. Because we, were, we are a generation desperately looking for heroes. Our film stars at the end of the day are celluloid creatures. Their lifestyle, their personal lifestyle is often very different to what they portray on cinema. Our cricketers at the end of the day have also become part of this marketing glitz. APJ Abdul Kalam didn't need to be marketed. I need to market my book. APJ Abdul Kalam didn't need to market his book. People read APJ Abdul Kalam because they wanted a slice of the man. And that is the remarkable quality. He didn't, he, look at his hairstyle, look at what, you know, he doesn't conform to any a stereotype of what a modern day hero should look like. And yet he was embraced by people. Uh, I will remember Maha, I went to Bihar once uh, with APJ Abdul Kalam, Hindi speaking state, he didn't know Hindi and yet the people just wanted to touch him because they wanted to, uh, they felt I think that in APJ Abdul Kalam there was someone who remained like them, he had not become like the VVI, uh, uh, someone you know who they could identify with who was, who was very much part of their life 
who had not become part of this chaka chon this mm. you know the bright lights of power mm. i think because he eschewed power he stayed away from the trappings of power mm. that's why there was this sense that people could identify with him rajdeep also you know uh, you were talking about how india is a young country and there's this constant debate that we should have younger leaders but this person apj abdul kalam was young by no means uh, he was uh, he was senior and when he became the president he was, he was a he would fall in the category of a senior citizen and yet he could strike the chord even with school students i mean how did he really manage to do that you know i think it's the old saying that you can be age is simply a statistic you know uh, at the end of the day you can be 80 and you can have the heart of an 18 year old as apj abdul kalam had or you can be 18 and talk and think like an 80 year old i think he had that youth connect uh prime minister modi to an extent also has that youth connect perhaps for entirely different reasons mm. perhaps because of his oratory mm. perhaps because he is seen to embody the image of a strong india mm. apj abdul kalam i think identi was identified by young india because they saw in him someone who had eschewed the trappings of power and therefore was someone who was precisely the kind of person they wanted to be like uh and i i hope that some of our netas Uh, who are there at the funeral will em, em, you know em, em, embody the simplicity that apj abdul kalam stood for